Hey, it's Hawken with Top Don, and today we're going to take you through cloning another GM Global Electronics Platform Engine Control Module. Today we're going to do an E84 ECM Engine Control Module from a 2017 Chevrolet Spark. So, uh, we talked about this in one of our previous cloning videos. We're going to move my bubble here so you can see this better. Uh, we talked about cloning GM Global Electronics platform modules before. Uh, if you're not sure which vehicles belong to this group, the QR code here on your screen will allow you to see the TSB. There may be a newer updated TSB, so don't hesitate to check your service information for this just to verify that there are not additional vehicles. Uh, the presumption is newer vehicles than the ones listed on the bulletin will, of course, be included as well. So the tools we're going to use today in this cloning video will be the Phoenix Light 3 and our Top Don T Ninja box. We're also going to use the MCU V3 kit. Now, the MCU V3 is used for a variety of cloning functions. Uh, it depends on the specific vehicle application whether or not it's going to be required. But in this particular situation, we do need to use the MCU V3. So, here's a picture of our ECM and our topped on Phoenix Light 3 on the left. The designation of this ECM, as we mentioned before, is the E84, and the part number is listed here on the screen. There is a supersession for this part number that is not relevant in this particular situation. We are simply matching up the serve or service tag number on the bottom left of the ECM here between the original module and the donor module. So we have two of these ECMs, and we're going to transfer the data from the original module to the donor module. So just wanted to review what we talked about in our previous GM, ECM, and uh, Global Electronics cloning video. We talked about matching up our service tag number or serve number, uh, the module identifier, so whether it's E84, E39, etc., that has to match up as well. And those must be uh, identical between the original and the donor. So we're going to make sure that we have that, and then we can proceed with our cloning. A couple of cloning tips we want to go over again, just as a reminder. We want to make sure when we're doing our cloning that we have a stable power supply to the dongle on the professional series tool we're using. We also want to make sure we have a stable power supply to the T-Ninja box. And of course, as long as we have those two things, uh, we should not have any issues with cloning. We want to make sure all of our wired connections between the T-Ninja box and the module we're cloning, as well as the T-Ninja box to the scan tool dongle itself, are all hardwired. And the scan tool dongle must be hardwired to the scan tool via USB cable. So we want to make sure we have good, solid connections between all of the various components involved in the process. This ensures that the data transfer will not have any issues and we will not get corrupted data or a failed cloning event. And of course, we don't want to brick any modules. So that's what we want to be sure of. We also want to make sure we have strong connection to internet throughout the entire cloning process. So make sure you're checking all of these things before you get started. Then you should be able to proceed. Now, once we get into the data reading and writing processes, we want to remember we want to read each piece of data at least twice, both the flash and the EEPROM data. If there's only one file, we want to read that twice. We want to save two versions of it, version one, version two, maybe do three if you really want to be cautious. And then we're going to use the file data comparator so that we can verify that it has read the same data each of the times we have read the data from the tool uh, and from the module. Once we have verified that the file information is the same, then we can proceed with the cloning. We're also going to make sure that our cloning tool, in other words, our scan tool, has been fully updated before we launch into any cloning process. As always, it's important to make sure your software is up to date.
So now we're going to take you to the walkthrough on the screen of the Phoenix Light 3 and show you all the steps necessary to clone this specific ECM. Okay, so now we're going to take you through the steps here on the scan tool software so that you can see uh, what steps are required as far as the cloning of this module. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the services menu on the professional series tool and then we're going to go to IMMO prog which is right here kind of looks like a little chip and then it's going to ask us to connect the dongle as well as the T-Ninja box all together. Uh, we want to connect the dongle to the scan tool using a USB cable and we want to connect the dongle to the T-Ninja box using the Y cable that is provided. We also want to plug in the power supply uh, to the T-Ninja box Y cable. Now in some cases you may also need a secondary power supply. Okay, so now we're on the main menu. We're going to click on engine here in the top right corner. And then we're going to click on the engine module manufacturer, which is AC Delco, a.k.a. General Motors. Then we're going to click on the designation of the specific ECM or engine control module we are planning to clone, which is E84. And then it's going to remind us about the USB connection. Now we're not going to show you the wiring diagram on the scan tool, but we will pause and show you the connections on the module. Of course, all you need to do is click view wiring diagram in order to properly connect the tool to the module. Now we're going to hit connect. And it's going to take a moment to do the secure login. As always, we want to make sure we have good, strong internet during this process. And we're just about there. Again, we're going to time lapse this just a little bit to speed it up for uh, just demonstration purposes. And now we see we are connected to the module. Once we're connected to the module, we are going to back up the complete data. Now, again, we're connected to the original module from the vehicle. And of course, that module has to be functional in order for us to be able to read the data. So we want to make sure we can talk to this module before we go ahead and try to clone it. So we would want to make sure with our scan tool when it's originally installed in the vehicle that that module does talk and that it is at least functional enough that we can look at the information inside the module and read it out, such as the VIN number, uh, the software calibration numbers, things of that nature we want to make sure we can read before we go to try and clone this module because if it's already corrupted, then cloning the module is not going to do us any good. So once we hit the backup complete data, you'll see that it reads the comprehensive file. And we'll time lapse this for you just to speed it up. Uh, we are given the option to save the data. Now, once we have this option, we're going to want to name the file something that we can remember. So if we're planning to do lots of cloning with our tool, probably want to rename the file with the VIN number of the original vehicle, uh, something that's very easy to differentiate. So we would type in, delete out most of this data except for the designation, which is, of course, E84, and maybe delete all these other digits here, the zeros, and type in the VIN instead. And then we would also want to put maybe a version 1 or OG for original 1 at the end of the file so that we can differentiate which version of the file this is. Because again, we're going to read this file at least twice, if not three times. We're going to want to name it version 1, 2, and 3. And then we're going to make a comparison of those files to make sure that the data that we read is not corrupted. So you'll see we'll type in a designation here at the end of the file name, just so we can keep our files straight. So here's OG1 and then we're going to save it in the default directory. And after we save that, we're going to repeat the process and back up the data a second time, so we have at least two files to compare to one another. And again, we'll time lapse this quickly for you so you can see. And then, just about at the end here, we're going to have our option to save. And again, this one we're just going to name OG2. And then we're going to save it. 
in the same file directory that we saved the other one. And we get data backup succeeded. Now we're going to go back to the main cloning menu and we're going to compare the two files that we read from the original module. So we're just going to swipe from the outside of the screen towards the middle until we get back to the main screen. And now we're going to click on Data Comparison. And now we're going to load the two files that we pulled off of the original module and we're going to compare the data between those two. Now again, if you want to, you can read it three times and compare all three one at a time, but we're just going to load the two that we read this time and we're going to compare them using the comparison button here and you can see that they are identical. Now assuming we could talk to the module in the vehicle and we could read out basic information, it's reasonable to expect that the data should have read successfully and we have continuity or in other words the files are identical that we read from the module twice. That means now we should be good to go ahead and connect our donor module and write the data to the donor module. So we're going to go ahead and we will disconnect from the module. We're going to go back into the menu and hit Delco E84 and connect via USB. And again, now that we've got the donor module on our bench, we're going to go ahead and set all the connections up just like we did on the original module and we're going to connect to the module using the same button. Connect up here. And now we'll do the secure login and this will take just a moment and we'll time lapse this for you just to speed it up. Okay, so now we're connected to the donor module. Now we are ready to restore the file from the original module. So we're going to hit restore complete data and it's going to write the files from the original module. Now again, we read the file twice, so it doesn't matter if we choose one or two here as far as the two versions we pulled. Both are identical, so it's irrelevant which one we choose. We're going to go ahead and hit OK after we choose one, and then we're going to restore the data. And it'll take a little bit of time here, and you don't want to disrupt the process. Okay, so we're just about done. And we're OK. We restored the data successfully. So now the donor module has the same information in it from the original module. Now we're going to go back out to the menu and we're going to disconnect from the donor module. So now we had a successful disconnection. Once we've done a successful disconnection, now we're going to use a J2534, either the Topdon R-Link or the MDCI that comes with the Phoenix Max or the Phoenix Smart. And we're going to buy a short-term subscription to the GM OEM software. And we're going to check this module after we install it in the vehicle for calibration updates and software updates. This is a pretty straightforward and simple process. We're not going to walk you through that on this particular video, but that is something that we would want to do after we complete a cloning, is always check it with the OEM software subscription to make sure that there are no additional updates or software that need to be changed or modified after the cloning. We want to keep in mind that a cloning is not always a direct one-to-one -one copy, and therefore, there is often a need to hit the module with the OEM software using a J2534 after the fact. So again, we're going to go ahead and do that with GM TechLine Connect, and then we can validate and make sure the vehicle is good to go for the customer. Okay, so just wanted to thank you for taking the time to watch our cloning video here for the E84 ECM from this 2017 Chevrolet Spark. As always, we appreciate you taking the time to watch our videos. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below or reach out to your local support. Uh, we would love it if you would share this video with anyone you think would find it beneficial. And as always, we're looking for more ideas on videos you would like to see from us next. So again, I'm Hawken with Topdon, and thanks for watching.